Okay then my friends, so now we're at the point where we have an Express app up and running and we're sending an HTML page back to the browser when we visit the root URL of the site in the address bar. Now we want to start adding some additional functionality to the site using HTMX. So like I said before, HTMX allows us to add extra attributes to HTML code to make network requests and then get some kind of HTML snippet back from the server to swap into the browser somewhere. For example, I want to make a button on this home page, which when I click it, it sends a get request to the server to forward slash books. Now, when the server gets that request, I want it to send back an HTML snippet, which includes a list of all of the books from the books data array that we have. So that's what we're going to focus on in this lesson. First of all, let's make a new button in the HTML template that we currently serve up as the home page. And we'll do that inside this div right here with a class of book list. So then make that button and inside the button, let's just say, I don't know, show books or something. And now we want to click on this button to trigger a get request to the server to the URL forward slash books. And HTMX allows us to do that by adding the attribute hx slash, uh, not slash, sorry, hyphen get, and then set that equal to whatever URL we want to send that get request to. In our case, that's just forward slash books. And by the way, we're not handling that request on the back end yet, but we will be setting up a listener for it shortly. And that's all there is to it. We just add that one single attribute provided by HTMX to trigger a GET request when this button is clicked. No extra JavaScript needed, just a single HTMX attribute. That's how simple it is. And just really quickly, whenever you use an HTMX attribute, you're going to always see this format right here, HX, then a dash, then some attribute name. All right then. So now we've done the first bit. Next, we need to handle the request on the back end and send back an HTML snippet as a response, which then gets injected into this HTML page somewhere. So let's head to the app.js file where we can register this backend route we're making a get request to. And we're going to do that down here below the other request handler for the homepage route. So we can say app.get because we're reacting to a get request right here and we invoke this. And then the request path is just forward slash books. So we add that as the first argument. Then we take a handler function as a second argument as well. So we can handle the request in that function. Now, as arguments to that function, we get access to the request and response objects. So add those as well. Now we want to send a response back to the client right here inside this function. And we do that by saying response.send and we invoke that function. And within this send method, we need to pass some kind of HTML template. So let's think about what we want that template to be first of all. Now the button we click on to send a request to this endpoint is to show the books, right? So ultimately we want to send back an HTML template, which is a list of those books. So within that template, we need to inject the books data. Now, I suppose we could just make that template string directly here in this function as an argument, but instead I want to create another file in the views folder to make that template. That way we're keeping this app.js file cleaner and we're also making the template more reusable in case you want to use it elsewhere in the application at another point in time. So in the views folder then make a new file called list.js or whatever else you want to call it, totally up to you. And the way we're going to do this is the same as we did for the homepage template in the index.js file. We made a function which returns a template string of some HTML. However, in the case of the homepage, we sent back a full HTML document, right? Including the HTML tag and the head, etc. But for this list template that we're going to make, it's going to be just a smaller HTML snippet that we want to send back to the client, probably just a UL tag with a bunch of LI tags inside one for each book, right? So let's make this function then and flesh this out. All right then. So I'm going to make a new constant called create list templates, and I'm going to set that equal to a function and that function needs to return a template string. So make sure you use your back ticks. And then remember to get that syntax highlighting and Emmet features inside this string, you need to add the little tag before the back tick. So we say forward slash asterisk HTML asterisk forward slash, right? All right. So inside this template string, we want a UL tag. And then inside that, we need an li tag for each book object inside the books data array. Remember that's inside the data file up here. So we're going to need to import that in a moment. But first of all, how are we going to do this? Well, the easiest way would be to use the map method 
to map through the book's data and then return a bit of template for each book. And that template would be an li tag which contains the book title and the author. So inside this ul tag, let's say dollar sign and then curly braces to output some dynamic content. And then inside that, we can use the books data array, which we also need to import, right? Now to do this quickly, I'm just gonna start typing books data up here somewhere, then click on it to auto import it from the data file. And then I can just delete this right here, right? And we still have the import. Cool. So now we can use the map method on the books data to fire a function for each book in the array. And that function needs to return a template, an li tag, right, for each book. And we could get access to each book as an argument to this function right here. Now we could technically just make that template right here in this file and return it inside this map function. But I'm gonna make a new file inside the views folder for an individual book. And the reason I'm doing this is to make the book template reusable because we'll be using it elsewhere in the future too. And if we made it directly inside this list template, that means the book template wouldn't be reusable unless we rendered the complete list again. So let's now make a new file over here called book.js and make the book template inside that. Okay then, so same as always, we're gonna create a constant right here. And this time it's gonna be called create book template. And we're gonna set that equal to a function which returns a template string. We'll add the HTML tag right here. So we get that syntax highlighting. And then as an argument inside here, we're gonna pass in a book. And we'll do that later on right here. It's gonna be this book. Remember we cycle through the books data and for each book we fire a function and we get access to the book. So Inside here, we're eventually gonna invoke this function to create the book template and pass that book in. All right, so inside here, we want an li tag for each book, right? And in fact, what I'll do is I will attach a date attribute to this, which is gonna be the ID, and I'm gonna set that equal to something dynamic. So dollar sign curly braces, and it will be the book and then the ID property on it, just in case we need this ID at any point in the future. Right now, we don't really need this. This is just a normal HTML data attribute, right? Nothing to do with HTMX or anything. It's just so that we have an identifier in the front end for the book with the ID if we need it. All right, so now inside this li tag, I wanna create a div with a class of details. And this is the book details. So we have an H3 and that's gonna be for the title. So we'll output the title by doing dollar sign curly braces, then book.title. And then below that, we'll do a paragraph tag for the author. So again, dollar sign curly braces, book.author this time. And then below this div, we'll also create a button. And inside the button, it's gonna say delete. So later on, we're gonna be able to delete books by clicking this button right here. But for now, Let's just leave it at that, simple template. So we're outputting the title and the author of each book. We need to export this. So export default, create book template like so. And that's so we can use it over in this file, the list file, because we're gonna invoke it right here, create list templates. And that needs to be imported. Oh, not create list template, sorry. Create book template. All right. And then we can now invoke that and pass through the book, awesome. Right, now there's one more thing we actually need to do right here, and that is to use the join method right here at the end of the map method. And we want to join using an empty string. And the reason we need to do that is because this map method right here is returning a new array, an array of templates essentially. So it would look something like this, an li tag and then you know whatever template is inside that, then another one for another about, uh, book. So it would be another li tag, uh, with some more content and so forth. Now, we want to join all those together to be one giant template string. And we do that using this join method. And the thing that joins them together is an empty string. So there's no connector really between them. They just kind of push up next to each other. All right, so that's done. We also need to export this actually. So let's say export default, and it is create list template like so. And then finally, let me just add on .js at the end over here. Otherwise we'll probably get an error and then down here as well. Save that. And then we can go back to the app.js file and where we have this get handler right now. 
for this request of forward slash books, we now want to send back the templates of the list of books, right? And to do that, all we have to do is invoke this function, create list template over here. So we'll say that create list template, click on this to import it like so, and you need to invoke this as well. So again, very quickly, this function is going to return this template, the UL, and inside that, we return a template for each book using this function right here. So we get this template multiple times inside this UL. And then we're returning all of that now as a response. Now, when HTML gets that on the front end, it's going to inject it into the browser. So we can see that template. So let's try this out now. I want to open up the terminal and make sure the project is running. Yes, it is. And then head to a browser. All right, so we can see this button here. And before we click it, I want to warn you that this is going to look pretty stupid when we click on show books, believe me now. But I've also got open the network tab over here. So you're going to see when we do click this, a network request being made, that get request. And also if we go to elements, I want to open up this main tag and then book list because I want to see what happens to the HTML when we get a response as well. So let's go to network again first and click on this and notice we get this network request now, right? And back over in the elements, you can see now we have this button right here with a UL inside it and LI tags inside that as well. So all of that HTML response that we got has found its way into the button itself. Now that's not great, is it? It doesn't look very nice. We don't want the HTML to go into the button. So we're going to figure out how to place this HTML response somewhere else in the page in the next lesson.